Hey there, loving couples. It is almost winter, and you know what that means. Tactical romance black ops. Pat Benatar said that love is a battlefield, and she was right. So it's time to get back in the game, soldier. I am Adam Lane Smith, the attachment specialist. I've been doing all this training and experience for 15 years in the field of psychology and in romantic relationships and in helping people build incredible connections that last for life. If your relationship feels like it's been on ice or if you just want to keep things really warm, really hot, these five hacks today are going to rekindle your romance this winter. Let's get right into it now. Unfortunately, winter crams us right in the close proximity with each other and makes us question all of our romantic decisions. We start to feel tired, moody, stressed out, right? It does not feel good to go through a winter time, right? Any cracks that are there in the relationship get so much worse. So it takes a lot more love to make that bond work. Many people take out this frustration, this exhaustion on their partner or their partner takes it out on them, right? And then the passion starts to really dwindle. Things fall apart and it sucks. So let's fix that with five practical tips that you can use to combat that winter fade. Let's get right into it. This is going to be a lot of fun. Option number one, adventuring together in the winter wonderland. Okay, plan a weekly outdoor adventure. Maybe go snowshoeing, ice skating, a winter hike, just walking around in the yard. My wife and I love to hold hands. We're all bundled up, of course, waddling like penguins because you have eight layers on. But we walk through the snow. You can hear the crunch. The icicles are on the trees. It's beautiful outside. It's so cold. And you walk together and you enjoy it, right? And usually what you say is stuff like, remember when it was warm? But that's okay. Take a walk. Enjoy it together. Embrace the season's beauty, the challenge, and, and challenge yourself, okay, with new or with rarely done activities. You can get some interesting winter fitness in if you do this right. So use these moments to create some shared experiences and memories. Now make sure, guys, and all of you, ladies and gentlemen, that you are showing up to this experience. Don't be moody. Don't be angry that you missed that gas station with cheaper gas or something on the way. Be focused. Be really present. Enjoy this experience outside. I mean, you don't have to go camping, but but maybe you do. Go somewhere fun. Maybe you rent a, a winter lodge or a snow lodge or something like that. You go to a cabin. You can rent them. You can Airbnb cabins now for the wintertime. Go there with a full furnace, a fireplace, a roaring fire. Enjoy this experience, okay? Don't obsess over making it perfect. That is the worst thing you can do. Do not just make it perfect. Have fun, okay? Secure attachment, really important for this. You knew this was coming. Be able to share those concerns and worries with other people, but also to let them go. Work on somatic experiencing for your body if you need to. Breath techniques, tensing muscle techniques. Learn to let go of anxiety. If you have a hard time with that, let me know. I have coaching. I work with people on fixing that. But get your work done so that you can be present together with your partner enjoying that winter, right? And if it is cold outside, they can't leave you because they need you for warmth, right? <laughs> so enjoy that connection. It also builds a bit of vasopressin if you go out and endure the elements together. Plus, there's plenty of time to keep each other warm afterward. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit, but enjoy your time with your partner. It is wonderful out there. Experience it and share it. Now, after you come inside from those cold, miserable hikes, but they're fun, cold and miserable, but also amazing. <laughs> enjoy them, okay? This is a great time to warm up. Maybe some hot chocolate or some enjoyable cooking challenges. Number two, cooking challenges with a seasonal twist. Have a weekly cooking challenge where you get together and you share and you build this together, right? Cook together. Cook something cool using seasonal ingredients, okay? Rotate maybe who picks the recipe to add some surprise and some variety. Don't make the woman do it over and over again. Guys, get involved and enjoy this too, okay? Turn cooking into a playful, collaborative activity rather than just a chore. This is really good for vasopressin bonding, especially if you cook it right and it actually tastes good. It could be a lot of fun, but you know what? Even the mistakes are fun because you could say, whoa, we got to do better next time. And there will be a next time, okay? This is, like I said, great if you cook, you get it ready, and then go on a little walk outside while it's cooking. Then you come inside and you eat it while it's warm. Something amazing can happen here, okay? Even hot chocolate can be very different if you practice it and use different ingredients. All kinds of great recipes for this online, guys. Make this very simple and have a good time. It is so easy to be relaxed 
and enjoy this process. Have fun. Tease a little bit, right? If you've ever seen a Hallmark movie where they're cooking together, what do they do? Ah, they pl- on each other's nose, right? Uh, sometimes they put it on like a neck or something and say, lick it off, right? There's all kinds of fun you can have with the ingredients, especially winter, especially desserts. There's a lot of fun for edible fun later on. So just, just to throw that out there for anybody who's enjoying that, but be playful. Okay, have fun. Do not make this serious. We must make the best fruitcake that has ever existed. No, don't ruin the experience by making it perfect. Have fun. Okay, this is about having a good time with your partner and showing that you can work together as a team and accomplish something. I talk all the time about vasopressin bonding here on this channel. This is a great way to do it during the winter time. Cook together. And also the research shows huge vasopressin bonding to cook with each other and then share a meal together. Oxytocin, vasopressin, serotonin, everything goes sky high when you do this. So hit all the brain chemicals, enjoy your life together, share this, make winter an excuse to have this happen. Now, if frostbite and sub-zero temperatures and wolves dragging you off into the woods to eat you is maybe not your your idea of romance. Maybe you want to do camping and in, in indoor camping where it's a little bit safer, right? Tired of hanging out, sleeping in the same spaces in your house over and over. Maybe you get cabin fever. I'm way up in the north. Everything is frozen over. You get cabin fever pretty hard. I get it, okay? Instead, maybe create an indoor camping night complete with a tent or a fort in the living room, right? Lay out sleeping bags. Maybe put up your actual tent in your living room. Maybe you put it up in your garage, but you kind of heat the garage a little bit, right? Enjoy an indoor camping experience that's a little bit safer, okay? If you have children, you can easily get them involved in this too. For couples with kids, for couples with no kids, involve yourself in this, okay? Tons of indoor themed campfire snacks are available. S'mores you can make in the oven. You can roast hot dogs in certain ways. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. Just have fun, okay? Use this as a time to disconnect, especially from technology. Connect instead with each other. Don't watch a movie while you're camping. Maybe put on a picture of like the Yule log. It happens during Christmas time and stuff, right? Or maybe just leave the TV off. Maybe put a blanket over the TV so you don't even get tempted. Just Do me a favor. Make sure you don't use real fire inside. Your passion should be the only flames in the apartment or in the house or wherever you're at, unless you have a safe way of doing that. They make little hot hot plates that you can cook on. You can actually avoid the stove. You can pretend you are really camping. You can live in a little tent. It, It could be great. Guys, this is a good way to break up the winter monotony, to break up that cabin fever. Sleep in different places. Change your inside dwelling space. Sleep differently. Have fun, right, while you're sleeping in different areas. Have a good time, okay? Be authentic and creative here communicate as if you two were kids again build a fun evening of connection build a blanket fort put up your drag your couch put it together put up chairs put a fun little tent sleep snugly in a nice little blanket fort have fun okay this is about fun winter is a great reminder that we can be children throughout the course of our lives together and enjoy each other's presence share that together sleep somewhere different sleep how somehow a little bit different Enjoy that experience, you guys. This is this is the stuff of life. Now, number four is to have a shared learning experience. Many people spend the winter months learning. They grow. They practice skills. Vasopressin bonding is easy this way. Interesting fact, a tremendous number of science fiction and fantasy authors come from Wisconsin and, and, and Minnesota. The ice cold dead months of the year, they write and write and write and write and they learn, they practice skills, they do all kinds of cool crafts. So pick a winter themed skill or a hobby that you can maybe learn together. Knitting, painting. Paint winter landscapes, right? Study a topic of mutual interest. Learn about the Roman Empire together. Sit out to learn something fascinating together. We are going to learn everything we can about the Mongolian expansion, right? Do that. Learn something. Dedicate time each week to progress together. Celebrate each other's achievements. High five. We did it, right? Take some quizzes on it. There's all kinds of stuff online. Learn a new language. Learn French. Learn Japanese. Learn Russian. Learn a language together. Use the winter months to grow, okay? It is important to learn, to mark milestones, to celebrate, to bond 
to share. Have fun with this. It doesn't have to be a money-making skill, but maybe it is. Maybe that's what you want to learn. Maybe you want to come out of winter ready to build an incredible business together. Maybe that's what you do, okay? Learning together fosters a sense of teamwork and growth. It's fantastic. Be kind and helpful to each other. Be kind to yourself as well, especially if you're on different levels on the task initially. If one of you is really good at it and the other one's kind of learning, okay? Or if one of you has a natural talent and the other one is a bit more of a struggle. Be kind and supportive. Learn how to properly support your partner through success and struggles. And then the next skill that you pick, swap. So it's something the other person's good at and the other person struggles on. In fact, Learn that you can support each other and encourage each other through this project. This is a fantastic way to prove that you are a team and that you're not sitting there going, hey, I'm better than you. No, really share that with each other, okay? Share the experience and say, even where you are weak, I am strong. And where I'm strong, you are weak. That's okay. And, and, and where, where I am weak, you are strong. Let's be strong together as a team so we have no weaknesses. Let's build this, Okay fantastic time to do that. And number five, create a winter memory book together. Document the experiences that you have throughout the whole season. In fact, include photos from those winter adventures or tickets from events that you attended, notes, drawings about your experiences. Here's something fun. Go somewhere, but then have a list of things you want to do while you're there and check them off together. Here's something really wild. Some couples go to a new place and, and go to a hotel room or an Airbnb and say, all right, we're going to have sex on 10 different places. And they mark them off as they go. And then they go, ha, ha, this was awesome. And they open it and look to that list and laugh. Okay. There's a number of things that you can do, but write them down. Document little things. Dedicate a regular evening each week to update this book, right? Have a marriage journal. Marriage journals are fun. Reminisce. Reflect on the shared journey, the places you've had sex, the things you've done, the fun things you've learned together, right? The adventures. Strengthen your bond through a shared history, shared storytelling, okay? This is how nations form, is we have a shared history. When you look at Rome, the later Roman Empire, they talked about their initial shared history as foreigners and aliens who came together, and that informed the later Roman Empire that we are all Roman together, no matter where you live. Their shared history and their shared storytelling. They have found places in Africa that describe this amazing history from back in Italy right? They find it up in Britain. They find it over in the Middle East. They find it everywhere the Roman Empire went. We are Roman because of our shared history, our shared stories. Are you united together as a couple? Do you have a shared history? A shared history of fun, of experiences, of struggles, maybe, right? Tickets from the first date you went on or tickets from the first winter date you went on. Okay, maybe you have a winter scrapbook for every winter and you open it up and you share it and you laugh at it. Okay, these are fun things. They seem cheesy, you guys, but they are so much fun later on. You can set a challenge to create new memories or have adventures. Check them off that list. Do that. Okay, if you don't write down your adventures afterward, write them down in advance. Either way is great. Guys. Be open about these experiences, men especially. Sense the feelings that you're having. Enjoy these experiences. Have them. Don't just check a box. Yeah, we did it. Have an experience. Share an experience. That's one thing where men are usually very weak. Sharing an experience, right? That's what women usually want from you is to share the experience. They're not worried about the outcome. Guys fixate on the outcome. It has to be perfect. It has to be right. It has to be the right experience. Share the experience. That's what's important. Ladies, give the men some space and maybe the guidance to learn how to be masculinely vulnerable with you. Okay? Vulnerability can help. This isn't weakness, but, but for the man to step forward and enjoy himself, to laugh a little bit harder, right? To maybe be a little bit silly in places where he normally wouldn't be. Winter is great for this, right? Snowball fights are great for this. To be a little sillier than he normally would be. Make that space for him. Maybe you guide him. Ladies, one of the best things you can do when you're on a walk is to 
pelt your husband with a snowball, right? And laugh, laugh at him because he's going to get you back. But you better, you better cover your ears and your nose because the snow will go right up there because he's going to hit you with a snowball about this big. So enjoy it. Ladies, you can guide your husband or your boyfriend so much in this process. And guys, don't be afraid to have a fun experience. Have a great winter together. Don't check a box that we survived another winter. We enjoyed another winter. We built a story this winter. We will always remember this winter. Right? Have a great time. Don't make it the winter of your discontent. Make it the winter of your discount tents, right? That you've set up in your living room. Enjoy the experience and bond as you go. Let me ask you this. Do you remember when you used to have fun as a couple? I hope you do. Make winter fun as a couple. Be lovers again, not just roommates, okay? But yet, be friends. Lovers and friends. Remember that winter time brings that for you. All of this should roll together into creating a friendship together for you. All of these lessons here, all of these five activities, a, a friendship that builds security. And through that security, it builds trust and intimacy. That's, that builds secure attachment, right? Everything we talk about here on this channel, you build secure attachment and intimacy. That's, that is how you rekindle an amazing romantic relationship. And that's a Christmas miracle in itself right there. Winter may be cold, but love is warm. And your winter can be hot, hot, hot. If you follow these five practical steps to rekindle those flames, I hope that you will. And if it's not working because something's in the way, you guys just reach out for help. I'm here to help you navigate back to loving each other again. Sometimes it's going to take a little bit more than a winter rekindling to fix something that's got off track. And that's all right. I am here to help because trust me, no situation is too broken if you both want to fix it. So email me your questions, drop some comments, put a little warmth back into this winter. I'll be waiting for spring. Support at AdamLaneSmith.com is my email. Otherwise, pop into the comments and say, Adam, we need some help. And I'll be there. I am Adam Lane Smith, the attachment specialist, the winter romance expert, the winter black ops expert, right? For more ideas on bonding and for building your romance, check out my earlier video here. What is emotional intimacy? The answer is going to surprise you. And I'll see you in that video.